We're in Bridge End and it's in the south of Edinburgh. You've got a row of cottages here. It used to be a wee community all on its own outside of the city until about the 1940s when Edinburgh housing began to expand well out of the confines of the old city. But this was a community with its own identity. That farmhouse of Bridge End dates back to the 1700s. We've got records of this as being a medieval hunting estate with a lodge and it goes right back to the times of Craig Miller Castle's first building. This was part of the Craig Miller Castle estate. George Binney was born in 1872 and his wife was born in 1876. He was born at Wright, Wright's house. That's it, it's Wright's, Wright's, Wright's house somewhere in Edinburgh. Double R-I-G-H-T. Uh, 29th of June. 5th of June. And he died at Bridge End House on 16th of May 1939. And Mrs. his wife was born in Newcastle. And the oldest son was Robert Binney, and he was killed in Arras oh, on really? the 20th of May 1917. The next brother was George, George, George Binney, then the next one was with Tom, oh, Thomas George, Binney, and then there was George is what I've missed Margaret out. Tweedy, Margaret Binney, then there was Jesse Binney, and then there was Chris, my dad. Chris, Tom, oh, dad. yeah. That's the six of them. Yeah. George Binney. Uh, was a he ran the equivalent of taxis in Edinburgh. Got out, went to Bridge End Farm. Oh, yeah. April the second, nineteen o five. They did own it. They bought that out. Well, George Binney also ran butcher shops. Yeah. He had two shops down in Leith. Ah. Yeah. And uh, one was in Tobus Wine, which is all different, and one was in Great Junction Street, yeah. which is still there. And in the main, they service the trawlers, the Granton and Leith. And Leith, and the local community. Yeah. 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 Granny's sort of high, this is granny time. Yeah. They would take the horse and co coach out to beyond Bonnie Rig. Oh. But that would be a day out to go out with a horse and carriage. And We were involved with dairy cattle and pigs and some hens. So with the the dairy cattle, they they were they grazed right. You know where the inch housing estate is. Yeah. They grazed there until they decided that they're going to build there. So grazing became less, and they also grazed. It's really the university grounds now. We called that the meadows. Meadows. And the, two, the, two fields. There was the two fields there, and that links away across the path of the railway line. Uh, the railway line. And when we were young, you know, the, the cows, they knew the, which stall they were actually. That was their, their house, as it were. And the cows, the cows would be sent out to the fields to graze. And Donkey's Road was so busy that you could stand at the corner and the occasional car might appear. And these boys stuff. were conducting, and yeah. they had, the, the cows knew exactly where they were going. They could walk along and into we the, the park. Traffic, uh, we controlled the traffic, <laughs> and the cows just wandered on yeah. at their own pace. Chris and I, we used to go holidays. Yeah. North Berwick, Dunbar, yeah. St Andrews, uh, Blackpool, Blackpool, Scarborough. Hi. Oh, and that's Chris and I, my mum and dad, sitting on a, the harbour Hello. wall. And his father, he fancied himself showing pigs. He's got three or four white, what do you call them, white? Large whites. Large whites. Or Landry's. And he's no, tending no. them at one of the, the, the I think they were Christmas shows. Or Landry's. He didn't breed any pigs. He went to Gorgie Market. Okay. Uh, he would buy what he called store pigs. 
young ones and feed them up. But the feeding was all, in these day, early days, was swill. And we had From the collections, domestics, and plus Edinburgh. plus the Edinburgh schools catering, the kitchens they had. But we used to spend a lot of time in the Inch Park yeah. with all these guys. Playing and football. Play football or cricket. Yep. And that fantastic, field, fantastic. The burden, the burden you would go in with a sack and go under the side of the burden. Pull up catch. The, what we used to call the, well, the, uh, the baggies. Well, the cow's demise was because of grass and feed. Yeah. Because yeah. by that time everything, no, Edinburgh encroached. Mm. It's when we were out there before, you know, Cavan Dole was a, almost a stop off for the horse and cart to get to, to get some water out of the fountain to mm. carry on its journey, and there was no lighting. So that that was the limiting factor with the cows, yeah. and then he focused yeah. on, on the pigs. And so we got the place easy. converted into a Danish Danish style pig uh, styes. Mm -hmm. It was a, a new idea, it was just a bog standard. Sty with metal bars across mm. the the front. So right. the it pigs of, couldn't get out. It was sort of split. And it, it was called the, Danish. I remember the, that. Right. The, pig, the pigs were fancy. Yeah. My uncle John Bizet lived in this cottage with his wife and family. He worked for Dixons and Company further up the road. Um, he kept pigeons in a loft in the back garden. He was a great pigeon fancier. Um, this house was the Stenhouses and Bob Stenhouse worked for Davidson's. He was a pigman. But after this house here was the house that my granny and granda Bizet lived in and eventually my dad and mum and myself, my sister and my brother. It was a tied house, Grand Visit worked for the Gilmers. This was owned, one of the Gilmers houses. Um, and so they lived and lived in here and Granda worked for the Gilmers until he retired. But they were, he was allowed to keep this house on, although it was a tied house. My sister and I, Margaret, came from the cottage at Bridge End nearly every day to get milk and eggs from Binnies. Normally we would watch the cows being milked, watch the milk being cooled, then get it in the pitcher, bring it to this door here, which was the entrance to the, the kitchen for the Binnies. Um, invariably we did not get into the kitchen, we were kept on the doorstep. Grandma Binny, who was a big lady, we always used to try and see past her but couldn't and we liked it best when Auntie Jessie came to the door because we could see past her. We were able to see what was going on in the long kitchen. Then we would get our eggs and off we would go home. This, this house at the back here was Ganda Chapman's house. He was head gardener at Smeaton uh, Estate, which is down just slightly past East Linton. And he came from there in 1927 to be head gardener for the Gilmers. And of course, when the Gilmers moved to Elson, he had to, my granda's family had to move out of there. The gardens were at the other side. Um, we used to, I can remember Auntie Peggy, my dad's sister, used to take us out and um, take the netting off the good gooseberries so that we could go in and help herself to some gooseberries. Granda Chapman used to put little piles of fallen apples for us to gather up. Um, and we, very often when we had, when Granny and Granda visit, had visitors, we used to bring them over and they were shown round the gardens. Um, so it was all very, it was all very rural here then actually. The first uh, tenants moved into the ranch in 1951. We moved into 1950, in 1952. And so pretty to, to get into the ranch at that time, you had to be of good character and people were basically vetted. Uh, most people that came into the ranch were, you know, but, but, 
birth from the sons of uh, central Edinburgh. You know. From a very early age, probably, certainly the, the age of seven or eight, off to the Inch Park. You would go down to the Inch Park, play football, you'd climb trees. That was a fantastic playing area. And, and well, they, they used to have a, a sort of smallish wood in there. In, uh, and we the used to have a wee speedway track. Speedway, we ran our, we ran our bicycles. Oh, we'll a wee, wee yeah. speedway track within the, that wee wood. When we, wood. When we were... Harry Darling's my name, and I think most people round about Bridge End have heard all about me, good reports and bad reports, and everything that goes, and uh, how things came about in my life and family. My great great grandfather was James Darling from Stirlingshire. He was a ploughman and contractor, and you wouldn't believe it, I said, exactly all those years later. We've not moved very far on because it's exactly what I've ended up as, as a ploughman and agricultural contractor. I was first told by the Bizet family about the land known as the Royal Nurseries of Craigmiller. Uh, the land between Craigmiller and the Inch was second to none. Uh, I called it no man's land, but uh, any crop is just uh, uh, no trouble at all. Uh, I got in touch with James Miller and they were quite pleased because being in uh, the position Bridge End was between Craig Miller and the Inch housing estates, a uh, very difficult place to work, but Miller was quite delighted. For 62 you got the land. Yes. At 65 we went into the house and then we were there for 35 years. That's right. In yeah. the house. When we got the land, we travelled from Gogar, where we lived, <coughs> and we had a nice house at Gogar. So he had said that um, he was going to uh, rent out the farmhouse because his sister uh, was moving to a flat at Dalkeith Road, so she didn't want to stay in the big house herself, so they were going to rent it out. So Eddie said to Harry, would you be interested? So Harry said, yeah, well, I'll have a look at it. So we had a look. And we said, would you think about selling it? And so Mr. Rennie went away and he came back and he said, yeah, well, I'm thinking about selling. I could sell, I could sell it. So, <laughs> so that we got the chance to buy it. So that was fine. So we bought it. And we didn't want to part with the actual buildings. Uh, for five years because he was, wasn't retiring till for, for five years, but he still had his business, his shop and everything. So he kept on his workers with the pigs, kept the piggery going and we had our side of it. We stayed in the house and it all worked out very well. We had a, a, a good friendship working with Chris. I uh, was quite pleased that we were next door to him and, and when he came to sell the piggery, we were quite interested to bring the two together and that's when you, you could say Bridge End became a, a full farm having the steading and the land all as one and uh, if you move on a bit um, uh, pigs uh, contracted a, a vesicular disease well all the pigs were held back for a while and just uh, what you call it luck if you like but the local scouts came in oh Harry, Harry, we're going on a scout camp to Oban and we've managed to get this van but we've no driver. Uh, so, <laughs> and Doris as well said, well surely run the laddies through to Oban. So I did. Uh, I took the lads through, I think it was a Saturday. I took the, the local scout group yeah, to Oban. And uh, then I came home. So when I came into the yard at uh, Bridge End, there was a group of people coming and said, Mr. Darling, we're wondering if we could hire your minibus. Uh, we want to go to um, Butlins and Ayr. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, I don't have a minibus. I said, it's, it's just an obligement. But uh, I got the idea now. Uh, so yes. all my pigs yes. were right, all held up, uh, as I say, for this vesicular disease. And we got them all sold. And I put the money into a minibus and uh, started uh, just a small in a small way, with the minibus, and uh, it took off. 
when we first went there, it was a, a rotten, rotten uh, harvest, wasn't it? A long, drawn out harvest. It was so wet, and the, the combine had bags, sacks. The grain went into sacks uh -huh. in these days, you know. Um, it was really good. You could grow anything. It was really fantastic. The land of Bridgen. Fantastic. You know, you could, I, I planted green barley. You could just about see it growing. Eh? If you've got a nice spring yeah. and the steam coming off, you know, uh. just about see the stuff growing. See where the cemetery is now? Well, that was a field for the cows. We had our cows in uh -huh. and then... It was um, when we nurseries. went, it was Bridge End House then. Yes. But when we had the land joined it together, mm. we called it Bridge End Farm. Yeah. It was Donald Laird was always looking for hay, our neighbour, so uh, we made an agreement with Donald um, to reseed all the fields, but we did that. The whole of Bridge End was reseeded into grass, and Donald was able to use it uh, for silage. So that was uh, it worked out very well for in, in those years. Um, so that's about all I can say at this moment. <laughs> Thank you. When Harry and Doris were here, it was the halcyon days of Bridge End. Absolutely. And up until the farmhouse community took, took it on board, it was, even, it was left, the old cottage was left to go to rack and ruin. It was the old cottage opposite the farmhouse, which used to be a thatched cottage. You could see from the way the roof was. The gable ends. And the gable ends and such like. But I remember they were, and the council now had, had purchased the farmhouse and the cottage. They were building the country park and laying all the pathways. The cottage the old co was used as a bothy for all the workers. Eventually the cottage went to rack and ruin, it was unsafe. And then it was a sad day, the council came along and... Demolished it. Demolished it, and it was very, very they sad. Didn't, they really felt as though they were handing it over to the community. But sadly, that Nothing wasn't happened. the case until it was reborn as it exists now. This is how the farmhouse looks today. It's been brought back to life in an incredible way. We're standing in what used to be the living room where the farmers would have relaxed after a long, hard day. Now it's a cafe. It's a community cafe that is staffed by volunteers and serves delicious, healthy, wholesome food made on a budget and is attracting more and more people. That's one of the ways we've brought it back to life. It was just a nice little community at one time, you know. And it, it was Bridgend, so it was called then Bridgend Cottages. There was an aroma, put it that way. <laughs> and you always knew when you were coming to the farm.